paint modes. It's not the most interesting topic, but if you're ever gonna use fusion and wanna take advantage of masks, you're definitely gonna to wanna to know at least the basics of how they work. So let's jump in. All right, so to explain this, we're just gonna jump right into fusion. Uh, right here in fusion, I'm just gonna make a fusion comp. Uh, while this is loading up, you might be saying, okay, why do I need to know paint modes? Well, because if you ever wanna make anything where you just take some plain text and chop it up and do something like this, You'll have to know how they work at least the bare minimum so uh, here is uh, now we're in here I'm just going to grab a background so we can chop up the background a bit and just to make things easier I'm just gonna grab a rectangle and an ellipse tool so these two here are our masks we can also grab uh, a couple of other masks and make our own but these are two that you're really going to be using a lot so I'll just go with these for now one thing that you'll notice is if we click on them obviously in the inspector we have a bunch of different things that we can do right and looking over here we have a bunch as well but there's something that happens when you connect two masks or more together it is currently I'm on this one right and I'm, I want to feed one mask into a mask so I'm going to go from my rectangle into this mask. And when I do that over here, now we have a paint mode that's here. If I was to view my masks, we can see right there what we're currently working with. And currently we can see that there's the two masks here and they're currently on merge. Merge might not mean anything to you. When I first got into it, it meant nothing to me. So I was like, okay, let's see what these do. I went to add and I was like, okay, nothing happened. Let's connect it to a background. So I connected to a background and I took a look at it and I was like, oh, okay. Come back here in my ellipse tool and then I go back to merge. Oh, nothing happened. It took me a while to figure out what was going on here. And the biggest thing that I skipped over was this levels adjustment. So what that is, is it's just a very simple zero to one. If I take a look at my first rectangle here, we can see down here, all of our values are zero. When I look in the box, all of our values are one. So what we're doing here is we're just taking a, a black or a white, and then that's what's going to be creating my mask. So now if I click on my rectangle here and I bring my level down to 0.5, what you'll see is it got a little bit darker. And now if I look here, here's zero, and then here is five. Um, now, if I was to take a look at my ellipse tool and bring it up here, now we have this outer one and then we have this inner one. Okay, so let's go back down to add. Okay, nothing happened. Well, what happens if we take this ellipse tool, let's go back into merge, and then we take this to 0.5. Okay, so now we're merging them together, right? What happens if we add them? Okay, now, because there's more space there, because everything is at 0.5, now we can go back up to one. And that's pretty much what happened here. It went up to one. And then here uh, we have all of our 0.5s. So now we have this as one, and if we come to merge, it's merging them together so they never increase in value from where they left off at, if that makes any sense at all. Where when we did the add, it's adding the values together, which then became a brighter value together, right? So if you have a something behind that is a 0.9 and you have it to merge, the 0.9 will show through, if that makes sense but it'll never add whatever the other is because we're not adding, we're just merging. Okay, so that's kind of how they work. Um, going down here, we have subtract. Obviously, we're gonna subtract the numbers. So we have the 0.5 subtracted by 0.5, which then in here, it cuts it out. Um, and you can, you can use this for a plethora of different things. Now remember, this is all tying into a background. So if we take a look here, here we have our uh, 0.5 right so we have like a 50% going here uh, let's change my color up so there we go we have the 50% coming through as you can see all of our color values down there is 0.5 and then we have the alpha is 0.5 as well so then it comes through here we have nothing so you can you can cut you know different things out and that's what you would think of as a mask right so coming into here we have a bunch of things the minimums and like I said, these are all, these could be a, a long node tree, you know, before all of this, um, but you're always just bringing in whatever comes in this one lane. So whatever happens before, 
gets passed to this node and then this node spits something out to here. So it's always whatever comes in, right? Compared to what this current node is. It doesn't look anything beyond that. So you're not gonna be doing any calculations for like nodes that are, you know, uh, all together. All of those will take whatever the parameters of this node is here. So uh, when you connect more into this node, you're obviously going to get another paint mode, right? So if I connect this into here, now this has a paint mode of its own. And whatever happens in here, whatever the calculations are that happens in here, it spits it out to here as if this was just two nodes, if that makes sense. So it's like just a good uh, a way to think about things when you're creating stuff. Um, and going all the way through whatever the minimums are, um, you have whatever the maximums are and you know going on uh, all the way through here so and because these were minimums remember we have the around here it's all of the zeros so that's why we don't see that there um but they overlap here so they're they're calculating each other and then they're like oh okay this is this um, up here obviously the rectangle is going to be a zero but the circle is going to be a 0.5 so that's why it's the minimums so it's the 0.5 and then we have the maximums obviously these are all 0.5 so they all show through well I think these you know kind of make um, sense uh, when I got down here to copy and ignore was when I kind of didn't make much sense to me because if you do copy it's just here so all we're doing is we're ignoring everything that's coming out of here right so we're ignoring all of this and we're just copying the values from the node itself. And then if we take a look at ignore, we're ignoring this node's data, but we're, we're taking all of the information that's coming through and we're just ignoring this node and then passing that information. So why would that be something of interest? Well, because you could come in here and you could make an expression and then you could write in an expression to have this get modified. Additionally, you could come in and then you could keyframe, you know, you could do one keyframe, this one as ignore, come over one keyframe, and then this one as copy. So when they, they can go through and then they would be switching, you know, where it's getting its information from. And that's kind of useful for, you know, if you're building something big, instead of building a whole nother tree for this element that you made, you could just do this simple copy ignore and then have it, you know, do something else down the road so that's kind of how they work it's not that difficult i know that i was uh previously asked like what do these do i don't really get understand them uh and i always just go over the multiply because the multiply is that that one that a lot of people um will use because you can then take one and then you could have it like cut into another one and then it's just where it overlaps in a lot of my videos where I do motion graphics, I explain, you know, you can use multiply wherever they overlap because all of these other points here, all of these other pixels here are going to be just zeros, right? So you're going to do a zero times one, which is going to be zero, but then a one times one will be one. So then it'll come through and then we'll have that final um, look that'll be like that. Um, so I always say, oh, it's always where they overlap because that's what's happening there and it makes sense. Um, but once you understand how the math works, um, you can really start to build really intricate things and be able to take regular text that looks like this when you type out your text, it looks like this. And then you could use paint modes and masks to create something that is completely random like this. That's kind of like procedurally made because you're also using that font as a mask itself. So there's a lot of really cool things you can do with these once you have a, you know, uh, an understanding of how they work. But that's kind of it for paint modes. Um, hopefully this was somewhat educational to some people. I know when I first got into it, I really didn't understand it, so I kind of just ignored it. I just knew that merge was just merging them together. Didn't really understand a lot of them. I understood subtract, how that worked, and then it was just pretty much just multiply. I didn't really take into account the other ones and how they work, 
but I was asked about it and I said, oh yeah, there isn't much information on it, so thought I'd share with you guys and yeah. With that being said, let me know in the comments what you guys think about this one. If you have any ideas, suggestions, leave them down below. And I have a Facebook group, I'll leave that in the description down below where you can ask questions about different projects you're working on and such things like that. But with that being said, my name's JR and thanks for watching.